Okay, let history. Okay, let me accept here. So, thank you everyone for coming. And uh, as you say, je suis vraiment francophone, puisque tu es au Sénégal, qui est un pays qui parle français. So, I was born in West Africa, in a francophone country, Senegal. Uh, it is the same history. The first time uh, Senegalese people met with uh, Frank Pant, it was in the uh, in the 15th century before coming here in Canada. So we have a very ancient relation uh, with the European, especially French people until nowadays. So, uh, and I live here in Canada since 2009 after deciding to come live here from France where I finished my studies and got my PhD in history, uh, especially in uh, African history uh, during the colonization. And uh, I am a teacher, as you said, in Laurentian, teaching in French programs, but sometimes in English. But I teach also African history in North Bay University, Nipissing University, um, pre-colonization -pre history, uh, Africa during colonization and uh, Africa after the colonization. And uh, yeah, I'm a writer, as you said, very interested in African history, but in uh, afro canadian history. I'm doing uh, very interesting research on, on that uh, history. And I think my next book will really speak about uh, the afro canadian women since a period, uh, since uh, the 17th century uh, in Canada. So today, I'm, I think I'm going, uh, I, I will do fast. As I said, my French is better than my English. My English is not very fluent as my French is, but I think uh, if you have problem to understand or if you want to, um, to make clear, don't hesitate. You can just stop me and uh, do it, no problem. So today I'm going to share with you my presentation. What I want is to do a presentation 40 minutes and we'll, I will give you 20 minutes or 15 minutes for the feedback. I want you guys to ask questions, let me know what you want. And also if you have contribution, something to give, don't hesitate. So, and um, let me share it, screen. Here is the, the presentation. I want to, so I'm going to speak about 400 years of black history in Canada. And uh, I will see what is this history, the different step of this immigration. And I would like to also focus on the blacks contribution, especially in uh, what they did as soldiers, as slaves, and the different contribution, men, women, and etc. Et I think this history is not known at all in, in, uh, in Canada, uh, especially, uh, for non-black uh, people, and it's, it's important to realize uh, we have here four communities who can say we have 400 and more history in Canada. The first are the indigenous people uh, who have thousands and thousands years of history in Canada. After that, we have the French people during the, uh, the first explorations with uh, Jacques Cartier, Samuel de Champlain, the creation of new friends, et cetera. And we have the British and we have the black people because during the, the, the new friends, we have the slavery. And during all these 400, last 400 people, we have the black people present in Canada. And it is not the same thing if we take the case for, for example, Asian people, for Latino, for uh, people coming from everywhere in, in, in the world. For example, Chinese people, their history in Canada, maximum is 200 people, uh, 200 years uh, uh, since uh, uh, the, the mid uh, 19th century, for example. So black people in Canada is a very ancient history and but very unknown history. So that is that I, I want to, um, to uh, enter this issue today for you. So, as I said, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my research and ideas on Black history in Canada. In this presentation, uh, I will so, uh, um, speak about so Blacks, the different step of immigration and their contribution. And finally, we will see what is their place in this country. So 
the first part is black people in Canada and all and continuous migration. We have the slaves, the loyalists, the refugees, the freedom seekers, the economic immigrants, etc. And uh, the first time we mentioned black in Canadian history, if I say mention, it is for during the colonial history, is a man named Matuda Costa. Uh, Matuda Costa was born in 1589 and he died in 1619. Uh, he helped Samuel de Champlain to communicate with the Mi'kmaq people in the Eastern Canada, in the Acadia uh, region, in, during the first uh, tribe of Samuel de Champlain in Canada. Uh, so he was not a slave, he was a free man and uh, recruited as interpreter, as translator, um, because he was one of the people he could speak, translate Mi'kmaq uh, language for French people. And uh, it, it, I think it, it was not the first time for him to come in, 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 in America. And as we know, the, the, the Mi'kmaq people, they are not only living in Canada, we can find them in, in United States in this region, for example. And uh, we is the Spanish, uh, the Spaniard explore, explorers or Portuguese, maybe we have people who had uh, some uh, possibility to speak this language. But the history of uh, Machu de Costa is not very uh, explored, and we, we, we don't have all the information about him. But what is sure is he was here with Samuel de Champlain uh, as translator. And he is a descendant of the Portuguese colonization of Africa. Uh, in my book uh, on um, Africa before colonization, I have a chapter on the, 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 the Congo Empire. Some people say Congo Kingdom. And it was very important to notice that uh, in 1488, Portuguese explorer arrived in Congo Empire and they had relation between Portugal and Congo. Uh, they introduced Christianity. It was not the first time we have Christianity in Africa, but the, 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 the Catholicism, uh, the first time we have Christianity it was under the Roman Empire. For example, we have Christianity in Ethiopia, in, uh, in, in the Maghreb. But this Christianity, Catholicism, was introduced by, by the, for the first time by the Portuguese explorer. And um, at the same time also, we had the, the slavery. The slavery also is not the first time in Africa. We had Arab slavery, we had slavery in African societies, but this kind of slavery, transatlantic slavery, taking people, bring them very far from there, and we, um, both etc. is uh, with the Portuguese at the first time, and after uh, the the Dutch, Spanish, yeah, and uh, France and British etc. And this period of slavery is um, three hundred years uh, history. And in Canada, we have two hundred and five years history of slavery in our country. And we can we have books speaking about him. And Canada Post uh, paid him a tribute. We can see Matthew da Costa on uh, uh, in Canada Post, for example, here. Yeah, he is Matthew da Costa. And we have a school in Toronto, Ecole Elementaire Matthew da Costa. Uh, so, and books about, uh, not especially, but uh, uh, if you read books on Blacks in history, we will see he was mentioned as being the first black in Canada. So after, he, after him, we have now the enslavement in New France uh, from uh, 1628 to 1760. And the first slave um, mentioned in the Canadian history, first black slave is a, a young boy, we called him Olivier Lejeune uh, in New France and in, in Quebec City. He was, um, a directly, uh, directly brought from Quebec, capital of the New France. Um, and he was sold uh, in uh, 1628 and was freed and at the end of his life. Uh, he was brought by the Kirk, the Kirk brothers from the New England. Uh, and it is the first time we have seen a black slave in Canada. From that moment to the British conquest, uh, more than 1,000 Black people brought from New France, West Indies, or directly from Africa, was, was reduced to enslavement in northern 
uh, New France corresponding in the present province of Quebec. Uh, as you know, after the end of the Indian War or the Seven, the seven Years War, now the New France became a British colony. But when British, they took New France, they did not stop slavery. They continued the, the slavery until the end of slavery in British Empire in 1833, okay? So uh, slavery was, we had the legislation of slavery in New France. Uh, Louis XIV accepted in uh, 1689 the request of the population of New France to have black slaves in addition to the native slaves because we had the native and the, uh, not all the, 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 the indigenous people, but uh, the, uh, some of them, for example, the, the, the Punish people uh, from the Missouri region and part of Canada was people who was mentioned being slaves in, 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 in Canada, for example. And in uh, 1709, the first time an ordinance was issued uh, on this subject. And black slavery is now official in New France. So we have here a document, the uh, uh, première page de la copie manuscrite de l'ordonnance Edith Royal. Uh, uh, this document is a confirmation of uh, the acceptation of uh, slavery by Louis XIV at this period. And African slaves in the different New France and the British rule, uh, 1763 until uh, 1833. In 1760, when the British took over, the new friends there were, as I say, one black slaves, uh, men, women, and children. Uh, out of the population of uh, 64,000, so two percent of the population. The Quebec archives indicate that in uh, 1759 there were 3,604 slaves and 1,132 of them were African origin. The rest was indigenous people, okay? And the English people not only maintained slavery, as I said, but they reinforced it until the abolition of slavery in Canada. This was the first part of black migration in Canada. The second one is um, after the independence war in the United States and the, when the loyalist people came to establish in, in Canada, especially in the Maritimes, but in Upper and, and, and Lower Canada. Uh, so the, why they came? Because the British people during this war, they promised uh, and then made, uh, to, to try to convert Blacks to accept, to fight on their side against the people who they call rebel, the, uh, and the American call them the Patriots. Uh, and at this period, we will see the arrival of African slaves with white loyalists and free blacks uh, between, especially this period of um, uh, 1780 to uh, 1784. And they arrived uh, uh, from black, uh, the, the arrival from black soldiers of, uh, uh, who fought with the uh, British. And we are also, we have, at this period, 50,000 white loyalists and uh, 5,000 blacks, you know? So these 5,000 also, uh, we can add them uh, to the population of uh, black slaves. And uh, uh, among them, we had slaves because they were the property of the loyalists. If they decide to move from Canada, uh, United States to come in Canada, uh, slaves was their property, they, they can bring them uh, as if, if they want. So we had this person and we had also uh, among them soldiers, the people who was free and decide to, to be soldiers and to fight. So the statement of these newcomers, as I said, was the Maritime, Upper and Lower Canada, but also in New, uh, Newfoundland and the Prince Edward Island. We have their, um, um, uh, we have blacks uh, in, in this region. Uh, since the when the loyalist Loyal people came in Canada, so we have here a book on them. We have the statement of them, uh, Birch Town, uh, uh, not that far from Halifax. And here we can see a family of uh, these uh, the, these black loyalists. 
After that, we can mention also uh, the Maroons of Jamaica who were exiled to Nova Scotia in the year of 1796 by the British government, which had previously taken over Jamaica from the Spanish, uh, Spain. So as you, as you know, uh, Maroon people, they have a very interesting history because they all, every time they were um, very reflected, they, they decided to fight against slavery. And as I said, they, they are resistant fighters and were exiled far from Jamaica and the place the British uh, administration find to bring them is Nova Scotia, okay? And we, ha we have a book about them, The Maroons in Nova Scotia by John Grant, very interesting book. And here you can see where uh, they lived in, the, in this region. Uh, they are, uh, I think, 600 people, uh, but most of them, they did not stay definitively. Most of them, after five years, was sent to Africa, especially in Sierra Leone. Uh, and nowadays we have their descendants. Eh? If, if you go to, to Freetown, Sierra Leone, you will see the travel Maroon spread and the descendant of the Maroons, the, some of African president in Sierra Leone uh, is uh, uh, on this community. For example, Prince Johnson, if you have this name in Africa, it is not in African extraction, in African ethnicity. For example, it is not Malenke or Kru or Fulani people because we can recognize as African who are who is in this ethnic group, ethnic group, or who is not uh, from Africa who came as slave during this period. So someone like Charles Taylor, Prent Johnson, uh, all these people we know they are descendants of, of this uh, part of history. After that, we have the War of 1812, a history of black migration to Canada and military contribution. <coughs> Very important in Canadian history. As you know, it did for, for the first time, uh, British and uh, French people and indigenous people and blacks decided to fight together against the United States who wanted to invite Canada because uh, there was a war in Europe between France and, 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 and Great Britain and the United States wanted to annex Canada and to have this country. Uh, but it was not only Canada, because after the independence of the United States, they wanted to have much colonies until um, for going to Mexico. And the, the, sometimes they succeeded because, you know, Texas uh, was conquered. And, and the, the second step was to go into the, the Pacific. And But they wanted to end by Canada. And this project was not possible because the coalition of indigenous people French, British, and Black in, in, in this world. And we have here one of them, Richard Pierpoint, also known as Captain Dick, a Black uh, loyalist, soldier, community leader, storyteller from, he was born in Senegal, Bondou region. I know this region because I'm from Senegal, not far from where I was born to. And he was earlier leader in Canada, Black community. And uh, Richard Pierpoint is very important. Here we have, uh, uh, for, for him in uh, Ontario and uh, in London there is a uh, edifice uh, um, naming after him uh, in, in London, Ontario. So I'm going to go very fast. Uh, after that we have the end of slavery uh, in British Empire but the slavery was not stopped in United States and during this period we have what we call the Underground Railroad. Uh, the slave wanted to um, leave from United States and come uh, especially in northern United States, but also in Canada. And when, if they are in Canada, they are free. They wanted to live free. And during these, these we have arrival of, uh, the, people call them the, the fugitive, but fugitive is not a good term. Fugitive means you are, you, you are criminal, you did something bad and people uh, want to take you. Uh, the, the, the exact term is a freedom seeker. They wanted to have freedom and they decided to go. And we can see them here. Uh, pioneering role of black personality. We have uh, like, uh, uh, for example, Harriet Tubman, Josiah Henson, Richard Pierpoint, uh, all these personalities uh, can have, uh, can be mentioned during this period. And they established uh, in the Maritimes and in Quebec and especially in Southern Ontario, uh, for example, Niagara region, uh, not far from Toronto, all these region in the South, we have the presence of black uh, becoming more and more important during this period. 
Underground Railroad is popularized by a uh, Canadian writer, Barbara Smoker. I think it is you here, Smoker, uh, in, in his uh, novel in 1974. But this novel just presented Canada as a paradise a comp in comparison of United States where Black world in hell in the United States. But he, she don't mention, she does not mention at all the, the racism Black faced in Canadian society when they came to live here, okay? Uh, this is just presenting as Canada. And the, the, the novel is in the program in the, the, the secondary schools. People, they, uh, they, they, they have this novel. And as young students, they will just see Blacks in Canada as people coming in paradise and uh, who had not history, history of racism or, or had history in their, in their country. And I think it is time also to correct, to, rev to revise this history because it is a construction. But in Canada, the history of Blacks is not all, only something good. They have very different, uh, a very hard history here in Canada. I, I uh, it is in my books, and other uh, writers say it in their in their books too. So in her novel, um, only address the reception of blacks in Canada without ever taking about the racism, discrimination, and rejection blacks were subjected in Canada. Uh, I think it is a chauvinist novel, so we can read this, we can say that. So here we can see a painting of Harriet Tubman escorting escaped slave into Canada. And here, this family, uh, Harriet Tuman, it was very interesting. I can't uh, just, uh, I, if you have time to see who was she, this lady in internet, uh, you can see that. And over uh, 30,000 Black people are believed uh, to have taken refuge in Canada through the uh, Underground Railroad during this period. And in the book of um, uh, Robin Wings, Blacks in Canadian History, we have these different uh, periods of migration. After that, I can mention the migration of Blacks in, uh, to British Columbia around uh, 18, uh, uh, I think I have a message here. Okay. So uh, this migration begins around uh, 1850s. The origin is California, uh, made up of successful business people. Uh, these guys are not slaves, and slavery was not accepted at, in, uh, in California, but they faced racism. I, uh, it's like, for example, if, I don't know if you are uh, unaware on the, 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 the Tulsa events in the 1821, when they decided to, uh, to murder Black people, especially those who were very prosperous, etc. And it was the same situation here. But why they came in British Columbia for two reasons, because uh, a man named James Douglas, of whom I have uh, spoken in different conferences, was the governor of uh, Vancouver Island and um, British Columbia. Vancouver Island from eight, uh, 1851 to 1858, and uh, British Columbia 1858 to 1864. But this guy, uh, um, James Douglas, uh, one of the very important Canadian uh, person, uh, history, history personnel, uh, was black by his mother. He, he, uh, uh, the, the, her mother was uh, from Guyana, a, a, a Creole a woman, and his father was an immigrant from Scotland. Uh, there were three, uh, uh, James and Alexander and uh, her sister. Uh, but uh, after his studies in, uh, in England and uh, he became immigrant here in Canada, James Douglas was, uh, became very rich in the uh, company of uh, Hudson Bay. After um, having very important uh, money and became the first governor of uh, uh, British, uh, uh, Vancouver Island and British Columbia. And he married uh, indigenous people. He was very fa very famous in European side, in African side, in, in indigenous people, very important man in Canada. And he played a very important role for the, the, the construction of uh, 
I don't know the German fair uh, from British Columbia to the rest of the Canada, and he uh, made pos made possible the integration of British Columbia in the Canadian Confederation in 1860, a long time before Saskatchewan, Alberta, etc. So it's very important. He is one of the uh, Afro descendant people who is the who is the, the, the in in the summit the, the, uh, we can say. Uh, and it's, it's, he is African descendant because you, you remember when Barack Obama became president in the United States, uh, people said uh, the first time, the, the first black people becoming president, everybody was happy for that. And in Canadian history, we have James Douglas 150 years before Barack Obama in our Canadian history, people, they don't know that. It, it's, it's like in Canada, we didn't have that in Canada. It's not true at all. 150 years before what happened in the United States, here in Canada, we have James Douglas, first governor in, of, of um, Vancouver Island, first governor of British Columbia, and a very important personality who played a very important role for the integration of British Columbia in the rest of Canada, and not uh, pushing uh, British Columbia to go to the United States. Uh, you know, very important history uh, here. After this period, we can mention the Blacks on the prairies at the late uh, 19th century. Uh, and uh, it, it was a kind of in, in the Canadian prairies, vast area, but very sparely populated. In the second half of the 19th century, at the beginning of the 20th, the Canadian federal government strongly encouraged massive immigration to this vast region. White and Christian migrants from Europe and the United States, primarily, but also Blacks came during this period from Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, Georgia, etc. Other blacks came from Eastern Canada in church of jobs and better life. Between uh, 1908 and 1911, more than 1,000 Afro African American from the United States were counted in the Canadian prairies. And we have here um, women, very important women named um, Mate Mace lived in this region uh, at the age of uh, 104. We have also John Ware, a very important historical figure in the uh, last week, June 6th, J John Ware is now among the very important Canadian personal historical uh, uh, and uh, he is uh, on this list taken by the federal government decision. So John Ware, here I had a book about John Ware. John Ware, uh, 1845, 1905, or Western Canadian Black Cowboy. This is my first book for kids. And I, for me, it's very important to give our kids um, documents, ped pedagogical researches to learn about our history, about indigenous people, about European, about all, and especially about black people, because if we want to fight against racism or against discrimination, discriminations, the, the, the best way to do that is to educate young people, is to educate children. That's why I created my, uh, my um, publishing house, working with people to produce uh, tools, to produce material pedagogical of, uh, of that. And we have it here, Edition Abbey. And this book is very important. Uh, as I said, uh, um, uh, the book was published in December last year, but last week the, the federal government decided to, to put John Wyatt on the very important Canadian people, historical people, uh, and he is on the museum now, you know, very important person, John Wyatt. After that, we have the First World War, and especially after the Second World War, with the immigration of Caribbean people in the 30 glorious years. Now, this is an economic, uh, fixing uh, the Canadian economy. You know, after the first and especially second world war, we had to rebuild the, 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 the continent. And Europe was were, Europe were dev devastated. And uh, after being devastated, Europe, they don't send immigrants in, 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 in North America, especially in Canada. Now, Canadian government, they had to find immigrants, especially from the Caribs. So we have the Caribbean servants, the high Asian immigrants, especially in, in the Quebec, people from Jamaica, Trinidad, uh, Guyanese people, etc. And these, they are very important. And this is one of the most known history of Blacks in Canada. So we know uh, the Toronto, um, how to say it, Toronto uh, Caribana, for example, 
And uh, here is one of the, these women, uh, especially the servant coming work here in Canada, more West Indies coming as domestics, okay? Very important. And after that, we have Canadian opponents up to African immigration in the 1970s to the present day. This is the last, because to immigrate in Canada, it was very close. Huh? Uh, we had, uh, it was a discrimination and racism in Canadian immigration system. Europe no longer sends immigration. Canadian, we have now Canadian became a multiculturalism society accepted by uh, Trudeau, Trudeau, first Trudeau in, uh, in multiculturalism context. Immigration also in context of economic liberalism. Now we want people come, we, uh, we had students, we have workers, uh, we have refugees, uh, family reunification, all these people with their background, their uh, knowledge, they came on, on immig Canadian immigration. For example, people like me, uh, for example, came in this context of immigration for Blacks. So to summarize this party, and I have to do very quick, uh, we can say Blacks are among the communities that can claim 400 years of history uh, and more in Canada, the indigenous people, the French, British, and Black people. So Blacks came to Canada under the French and they appreciated the British, Irish, Scottish in some part of the Canadian regions. And this is not known at all in Canadian history. This history is marked by the presence of the great Canadian figure of uh, African descendant, even if they really is very little known in our country. And I'm going to show some of them here. And Black ma people made their contribution to the building of Canada, as we will see in the, in the next part. So here, some great Canadian figure Africans. We can mention some of them during the uh, slavery period, the migration of loyalists and the Grand Railroad, during the, the Canadian and British colonial wars, for example, or this in the civil rights, etc. So, for example, the first of them is Marie Joseph Angelic, uh, 1705. Uh, 1734, she, she symbolized the refusal of submission and symbol of anti-slavery system resistant and black resistant in Canada. The history of women in Canada is very important. You know, uh, before the second and the first world war, women, they, did, they didn't represent anything in Canadian history. The first, they, ha they didn't have the right to vote women in this country. White women, indigenous and blacks, or, it was just for the men. The first time women, was nomin nominate uh, a deputy in Canadian history. It was in Manitoba in 1916. Just that, you know. And during this period of fighting for the women emancipation, we had black people. Uh, we had an example of black people who accepted to 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 be died, to 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 be sacrificed. Uh, and her name is Marie Joseph Angelic. Okay, she Dr. was. Uh, she arrived in. Yeah. Dr. Ma, I just want to say you don't need to rush. We have at least another five, 10 minutes. And even if we go over 12, okay. 115, so I don't want you to feel that you need to kind of rush. This is so very interesting. Okay, the second one. So I'm just going to names of them, but I'm writing a, a book on, on, on these women. So maybe one day we will have the occasion to go far. We have uh, uh, Rose Fortune, very interesting in the Maritimes also. She was a uh, a child born in the, she came during the, under, during the, 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 the with the loyalist people. We also have Chloe Cooley in the, in Ontario, in Upper Canada. Uh, because of her history, the first time, the, the, the first governor of uh, Upper Canada, John Gray Stinker decided to make restriction on slavery in Ontario, now in nowadays Ontario, because of uh, Chloe Cooley. And that's why uh, um, Upper Canada was uh, one of the, first province to decide to stop slavery in Canada, okay? After we can, I, I, I mentioned the peer points and his, the contribution of blacks in, in uh, the Canadian world, military, uh, the creation of the, the color corps, uh, et cetera. So after we, I can mention uh, Richard Preston of, was a religious and leader and abolitionist in Canada. Josiah Henson uh, uh, also, uh, Freedom seeker, Methodist pressure author, and founder of the Stillman and Down. So Josiah Henser, he, he was very educated, and he we have a book, The Life and of Josiah Henser. He was he 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 was a, a writer, one of the rare African who was uh, uh, instructed who can write. So 
we have Arya Tubman, as I said, and we have Anne Marie Shad, uh, 1823-1893. So he was, he was an American and Canadian anti-slavery activist, born in Delaware, but spent most of her time in. She was the first journalist publisher, teacher, the first journalist in Canada, woman, uh, white and black in, uh, uh, included. And uh, she was uh, the first black woman publisher in North America. Uh, she was an abolitionist, became a first uh, female African-American newspaper editor in, in, in Canada. And uh, we had James Douglas, as I said, yeah, the first governor of uh, um, Vancouver and British Columbia, very interesting personality. We have uh, William Hall. William Hall was the first black person, the first Nova Scotian, and the first one of the first Canadian to receive the British Empire highest uh, award for bravery, the, cross, the Victoria Cross Medal, after participating in the Crimean War and uh, Sepoy in, in Indian uh, War at uh, uh, 1857, uh, 1850. So, James, uh, no, William Hall is very important person in, in, in Canadian military history, too. Uh, we can see dozens of people, I can't mention all of them of his here. Uh, so but they did something very interesting, but it is not known at all. So the last one is the, their contribution. Uh, black history is Canadian history, uh, as said by Justin Trudeau in his integral speech on Canadian Black Canadian Month, Celebration Month in uh, 2018. But I, we can say the rhetoric is not enough. Uh, concrete action is needed because this is this uh, this word uh, from the Canadian Prime Minister are out of the step of uh, you know. Canadian perception of the country history. And uh, we think something uh, needs to be done. We have their economic contribution. Slavery during this period, <clears throat> if it was not slavery, maybe it will be difficult to conquer this country. I, I, even if they are slaves, they, they bring something, okay? Uh, slavery uh, represented uh, free and domicile people for labor once acquired, domestic, garden and yard. So, and uh, we have the historian, Lawrence Hill, who said very interesting thing about that. So, uh, Quebec historian Marcel Trudeau does not uh, say the opposite. He said black slavery performs several functions, including uh, bail out the army, increase the commercial capital, uh, be servant, and constitute a uh, docile uh, force, etc. So, um, during the full trade, we have pers black personalities in this, for example, the, the Bonga family, George Bonga and Agent Bonga was here as uh, people in the full trade. And we know how important was the full trade in Canadian history, cultural history, economic history, political history um, in, in this country. So tobacco in Upper Canada was introduced by slave, by slave from Kentucky and, and Virginia uh, in Canada. So this is an economy of uh, Upper Canada. So, uh, yeah, we can mention different things. Uh, for example, in political side, there are some great Canadian political figures of African descendants who have marked the political life of the country. We can mention, for example, uh, Mifflin uh, Gibbs uh, among the people who immigrated in British Columbia. We have the Honorable uh, Lincoln Alexander uh, in uh, 1922 in Toronto, in Toronto, for example. And we have uh, Jean Augustine, very brave woman. She was a troubling politician, social activist, and educator. She was the first Afro-Canadian woman to be elected uh, to the House of Commons, the first African-Canadian woman to be appointed to the federal cabinet, and the first fairness commissioner of uh, government of Ontario. Uh, Jean Augustine, very interesting. Uh, so uh, should we continue to exclude it from Canadian schools and university program or colleges? Uh, this is the, 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 the question I would like to ask people. For all these reasons I mentioned, we strongly, I think we strongly support that Black Canadian history be present in school, college, and university curricula in Ontario and elsewhere in Canada. 400 years of history is not something negligible. Uh, about uh, 2 million people, including more than uh, 6,100 in Ontario. Uh, uh, so, and we can say, um, in the name of um, the multiculturalism, diversity. If I say 2 million people, it is in, in the continent of, of America, we have the descent of slaves. Uh, in the name of uh, Canadian Charter of Rights. So 
and uh, to fight against racism, discrimination, and non acceptance, I think education is the most effective weapon to achieve. If we have this history, if we add this history in the indigenous people, European, and the different communities, I think we can build a very multiculturalism country and a very inclusive country, a very equity country uh, for us and for our society. So, my books, if you want to know about the, this history, my book is translated in English, A Forgotten History, The Significant Contribution of Blacks and Slaves and Soldiers to the Building of Canada, 1604-1945. This is my book published in 2018. Uh, I also have a book on African pre-colonial history, Africa of Great Empires, 717, a thousand years of economic prophecy, political unity, social cohesion, and cultural influence. John Ware, as I said, and if you want to send me a message about these books, my personal email here, beewdo at gmail.com, or the books are published in edition AB, edition with sab.com, or if you want uh, to go to Amazon, see these books there. Uh, for my biography, the book I used to do this presentation, all these things, yeah. And uh, I just want to say thank you for your kind attention. And if you have, uh, uh, if you want to, um, I, I say to ask questions or, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. Merci à vous, Dr. Abba. This was uh, in one hour trying to kind of do a good overview, but it's, um, some of some of there was so much so much to, to still learn from uh but some of the the main points that you've captured today like we were just sitting here in the boardroom with my colleagues and it's like wow we had no idea so <laughs> having you today is really wonderful and hopefully um we'll invite our members to kind of look at some of the books you've recommended some of the uh, Black Canadians who've made some important contributions. So I'm going to open it up to anyone who would like to ask questions or, um, so I've got one here. So Dr. Barr, are you aware of any research or writing on Black history in, the, in Canada's North? So specifically in the Northern region? Yeah, absolutely. This is very interesting. Yes, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, very interesting question, Graham. So, in my book, uh, Blacks in Canada, I saw uh, 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 Blacks in Canada, uh, 604, 945. Um, the, the, the place in Canada where I did not, uh, where I didn't mention anything about them is the territories, for example, um, Nunavut, uh, West Territories, or Yukon. But um, from East to the West Coast, I, I think uh, all the different steps of migration are on my book. In my researches, I don't have very important, yeah, I know there was um, some excursion, some people in this region, but I, I will do in my next researches, I will see how important it was and is it, was it very important if comparing, if I do try to make comparison with, uh, for example, uh, the rest of the Canada. But to answer this, the, your question, um, I am aware for very little things, but not very important things. And in my book, uh, I, uh, it, there is not mentioned at all the, the, the Black presence in the Arctic region, for example. Uh, so I'm doing research. I am trying to see how important it is. And for, my, for example, during my next, uh, publications, for example, my first book stopped in 1945. If I decide to continue the second one, I will definitively put this region because I know even they was not there for the first time, for the continuation, we will see people, black people in, 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 in these regions. So yeah, so it's what, what I can say for you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, miigwech, as we say it here in uh, Northern Ontario. <laughs> Wait a week, yes. Any other questions? I have one, but I'll give a chance uh, to our members uh, joining us today. And students, we've got uh, students at law as well joining us. Okay. No? How about here in the boardroom? Do we have any questions? Mm, not on top of my head, but it, no. was, it was really interesting. I yeah. was going to ask you, Dr. Boss, so you're speaking to the legal community 
future lawyers. So in addition to learning more about this history, um, what would you like to see the legal community do to, mm. um, to, um, for insight or to be better equipped uh, when they're servicing, providing services to the diverse community, including um, the Black community. What is there that we could learn or do differently? Do better. Yeah, I think, I think uh, for, for my uh, colleagues, my friends, lawyers, uh, it is like for the other people. Uh, it's very important to decolonize the knowledge, to decolonize the education to decolonize our minds. If we do that, and if you include that on our programs, even if we are teacher, we are dancer, we are lawyer, we are family, or father or mother, if we have this approach, we, are, we, will, we will create a very uh, fair society, a very just society. Uh, so in this case, I can say my colleague lawyers, they can try to see what is black history, if they want to understand why it is easier for police to, to be brutal with a black, a young black man, for example. And in my books, it's very important. For example, when I say the, 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 the word fugitive is very negative and there is a consequence between the relation with the police and this community, especially because it is a lack of the heritage. Guess what? During this period, when, when the slaves, they, they tried to run away from the United States to Canada, they were pursued by their, their owners with uh, dogs, and they were treated as criminals. And there was a lawyer, the, 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 the Fugitive Act, Act in uh, 1851, I think. And if they was captured, we can cut their uh, knee, we can do all that thing. And they were popularized in the new papers as criminal, for example. And if you see a black or a woman, man, alone, walking, you have to call the police. And it became normal. Every time you see them, you call the police. And this produced a very difficult consequence in, in, in the, the relation between blacks and, and, and the police people. And until nowadays, if you are black, if someone called police against you, when they come, they it's very difficult for you to try to convince them, no, it's okay. It, it became true, it, you know, um, this liar um, for long, if, because it was reproduced for long, 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 it became true. And that's, that's possible. We can, we can um, uh, uh, make a lie true, uh, just it is a social construction. It's very important. This example is very important. And if you want to understand why, it is difficult. Why the same for indigenous people? Why is there we have many uh, young people, uh, indigenous people in the in the jail? Why is their relation with the police, with the rest of the people, are difficult? Because it is their leg, it is their history. Well, what they faced, what was their uh, history, uh, the last centuries. If you don't know that, we will not be able to understand them and to take the good decision to help the the, the, the society, to help the country. It is a uh, the, the problem of country because, as I said, everybody here we are Canadians. If we are good, if we succeed, if we are uh, if we are great people, person in this country, it is for the country first. It is not for us. It is not for our father, our mother. It is for the country. For example, if if for example one day I am a very, I have my son. He he is a very good singer, very good dancer, very good football player, very good rider. Uh, Canadian popularized in Canada. It is not just for me, it's for Canada first. <laughs> you know, if we are here, if we work, we are going to pay tax, we have to contribute. We are all, it is for the country, you know, everybody. If I, if I did my tax at the end of the year, I have to pay like everyone. And it is for Canada. And I think if you do this work to create a very um, safe or very inclusive society, and it we it is the first 
profiting for Canada and not just for us. And that's why I want to, to let the lawyers know it's very important how to create a multiculturalism country of or inclusive society, a society um, which is very equity. It, history is very important of that. It is not only the first, the, the only one, but if you don't know the history, if you don't try to understand the history, you will reproduce the bad things we had in the, in, in the past. Knowing the history help us to fight against injustice and also to not to reproduce injustice in our society. Yeah, it was what I have to comment on this. Question. Thank you so. Thank you. thank you so much for sharing your passion as well. It's really. Um, I don't know if my English uh, is. Yeah, okay no, you're doing about. great. It's fantastic. <laughs> C'est fabuleux. Um, just a last round. If anybody has any uh, last comments questions uh we know that we can always go back to dr ba if something does come up just looking mm -hmm. at the chat box okay so dr ba i cannot thank you enough for taking the time to put this powerful presentation so much information a lot of food for thought as well and what we're going to do from our end we're actually going to compile the list of some of your recommended readings including yours to encourage our members to look into these books and learn more about the history. I also just want to take a moment to recognize Stephanie Bernard, who is the president of the Nunavut Black History Society. She was very helpful in putting, uh, making, connecting the dots so you could join us today. And Romy, uh, who's sitting with me today, putting together the new policy mm -hmm. for CLE and that um, broader interpretation of cultural competency. And to thank you, we're going to make a donation to the Nunavut Black History Society. We're also gonna offer you this fantastic oh. Kiki Tani Truth Commission. It's a thematic report for research Excellent. and also gather a uh, powerful testimony from the Kikitani region and we'll send you a book. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite books uh, for this particular uh, region. And hopefully we'll be able to welcome you to Nunavut so you can also meet with the students, go to the school and <laughs> continue these discussions with, with our membership. So, Absolutely. merci beaucoup à vous, ça fut vraiment un plaisir. Je vous souhaite un bon weekend and so certainly uh, hope to welcome you uh, in Nunavut, uh, perhaps in the fall. Thank you. Thank you, Nalini. Thank you, Shandia. Thank you, Graham, Kate, Rebecca, Priscilla, and everybody, if I don't mention your name. So uh, <laughs> just uh, you are included in these uh, acknowledgements. So thank you, uh, Dukan, Suzanne, and etc. So it was a very Great pleasure for me. And uh, as I said, if I have the opportunity to come in uh, Nunavut, uh, I will continue to learn about Canada, about indigenous societies, about all these diversity, and uh, it will be a very important thing for me. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Merci beaucoup. Ça a été un grand plaisir. Et la prochaine fois, je serai là-bas, parler en français, en anglais. Merci. Et puis peut-être pas, me. pourquoi pas, dans une langue africaine aussi. <laughs> Have a nice weekend, everyone. Have a nice weekend to all of Thank our you. members, too. Bye. Bye. Have Bye. a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.